On October 31, 1980, at just above Midtown Gallery in New York City, artist Lorraine O'Grady, dressed in a long red robe, debuted her new work of performance art. On a dark stage with a slideshow backdrop and dramatic recorded narration, O'Grady enacted hypnotic ritualized motions like a priestess of an ancient mystery cult, incanting magics over vessels of sacred sand and offering blessings of protection to the projected images of the ancient Egyptian queen Nefertiti and her late sister Devonia Evangeline O'Grady Allen. In the piece entitled Nefertiti Devonia Evangeline, Lorraine O'Grady confronted her relationship with her sister through the lens of Nefertiti and Nefertiti's own apparent sister, Mut Nejmet, a relationship which O'Grady felt would have been equally troubled. O'Grady's sister, Devonia, tragically died just a few short weeks after the two of them had finally begun speaking after many years of a strained relationship. Inspired two years later after a trip to Egypt, O'Grady began researching Queen Nefertiti and her famed family of the Amarna period. While in Egypt, O'Grady encountered a newfound feeling of belonging, as the artist says in her own words, surrounded for the first time by people who looked like me. Of African, Caribbean, and Irish descent, O'Grady never felt a similar sense of kinship in her homes of Boston and Harlem. In a New York Times article from September 26, 2008, she remembers her youthful efforts to balance what she calls her family's tropical, middle, and upper-class British colonial values with the Yankee, Irish-American, and African-American cultures around her. Building on a resemblance that she long thought her sister had with Nefertiti, she was struck by what she saw as narrative and visual resemblances throughout both families. While pairing members of her own family with those of Nefertiti, O'Grady weaves together various narratives connecting personal stories with historical events. In 1994, from the performance piece Nefertiti Devonia Evangeline, originally composed of 65 photographic comparisons, O'Grady took about a fifth of the diptychs and framed them in an installation piece entitled Miscegenated Family Album, which has been exhibited in various galleries, including the Art Institute of Chicago in 2008. O'Grady's work often focuses on black female identity and subjectivity, as well as cultural and ethnic hybridization. Miscegenation, in the title of the piece, is the procreation between members of different races, which was still illegal in much of the U.S. as late as 1967, when it was finally overturned by the Supreme Court. The ethnic identities of Nefertiti and Akhenaten have been debated in the spheres of Egyptology and African studies, with no immediate end in sight. Not quite as much as Cleopatra, but still. In Nefertiti, Devon Evangeline, and Miscegenated Family Album, O'Grady directly confronts the racism of a white-dominated Western European interpretation to the field of Egyptology. While the notion of a black African cultural and ethnic influence on ancient Egypt is frequently discussed today, we should bear in mind that in 1980, when O'Grady first performed Nefertiti Devon Evangeline, this was still seven years before the publication of Martin Bernal's highly acclaimed and criticized work, Black Athena, the Afro-Asiatic Roots of Classical Civilization. Now, I'm not saying that the Sub-Saharan African influence on Egyptian civilization is definitely confirmed. It's still a hotly debated issue with many shades of grey. Ancient Egypt was a really huge nation, surviving thousands of years, and during that time, there was a lot of contact with surrounding countries, including periods of foreign occupation. By the time of Nefertiti and Akhenaten, then in the mid to late 14th century BC, parts of Egypt were certainly pretty ethnically diverse, and it likely got even more ethnically diverse as the centuries led on up to the Ptolemaic period of Cleopatra. I'm pretty excited to see that the University of Manchester Museum is going to be hosting a conference on Egypt in its African context on October 3rd and 4th, 2009. You can read about the conference online. The URL's kinda long, www.museum.manchester.ac.uk slash collection slash ancient Egypt slash conference. So check out the transcript at ancientartpodcast.org for the link, or see my recent tweet on Twitter at Lucas Livingston. One point that we need to bear in mind when considering the ethnicity of ancient Egyptians is the baggage we bring with us to the discussion. We all have a lot of baggage, but what I'm specifically talking about is the whole preoccupation with ethnicity. 
I don't know about kids these days, but not too long ago, when I was a wee lad, every American schoolboy or girl could tell you their heritage, breaking it down by the percentage. Blame it on the African diaspora, Western imperialism, or Ellis Island, but I'd argue that this obsession with the argument over whether the Egyptians were black, white, Greek, Berber, or other is something of a modern development. The Egyptians were an ethnically diverse lot, and they would have said to us, so what? What mattered to the Egyptians was that you were Egyptian. You don't hear about ancient Egyptian race riots. The beauty of O'Grady's miscegenated family album is that it looks more than skin deep. O'Grady draws a few parallels between her sister Devonia and Nefertiti. They both marry, have daughters, and perform ceremonial functions, one as a priestess, the other as a bride. Devonia passed away at the age of 37 before the two sisters could fully reconcile their differences. Nefertiti suddenly vanished from the written record after the twelfth year of Akhenaten's reign, around the year 13. 1941. Back in the 80s, when O'Grady was researching for her performance piece, Nefertiti Devoni Evangeline, the prevalent theories for Nefertiti's disappearance involved her death or fall from grace, perhaps due to Akhenaten elevating another consort to great royal wife. Akhenaten did, in fact, elevate someone else to the great royal wife at the time, his eldest daughter Meritaten. Nefertiti may have died, or some argue that she was elevated to co-regent, like a king in training. Another theory is that Akhenaten's fourth daughter, Nefru-Neferuaten Jr., became co-regent. She's junior because another one of Nefertiti's names was also Nefer-Neferuaten, and since the co-regent was named Nefer-Neferuaten, well, hence the confusion as to exactly who was co-regent. After the death of Akhenaten, then around 1336 BC, we have King Smenkhara, who ruled just a short while before our boy King Tut came onto the scene. Another parallel that O'Grady draws is between herself and Nefertiti's apparent younger sister, Mutnejmet. And just as the younger O'Grady was left behind after her sister's sudden and tragic passing, Mutnejmet would also have been abandoned after Nefertiti's sudden disappearance, according to the theories at the time. Just to bring everything else up to current theory, contrary to popular speculation, there's no evidence that Nefertiti's sister is the same Mutnejmet who was queen to the later king Horemheb. Also, the more widely accepted translation today of Nefertiti's sister's name is Mutbenret, which is spelled exactly the same in hieroglyphs. But those are both minor technicalities and have little to no impact on O'Grady's overall work. The importance of Nefertiti Devoni Evangeline and miscegenated family album is that the immediate physical resemblance in the framing of O'Grady's family members with figures of ancient history is indicative of deeper sentiment and associations. The past becomes an idealized and humanized film through which our own lives are filtered and compared. So much comparison between these ancient and modern figures compels me to draw one comparison from my own imagination. Keep on moonwalking, Michael, and the great beyond. You'll find a whole lot of great links about Lorraine O'Grady and her artwork at ancientartpodcast.org. Click on additional resources and scroll down to the post prominently entitled Lorraine O'Grady. If you're interested in seeing the Segenated Family album in person, Lorraine O'Grady has posted on her own blog that it should be installed at the Art Institute's new modern wing sometime in the near future. And I have an unconfirmed corroborating report from unnamed sources. But if you want to find out for yourself, over at ancientartpodcast.org, among the additional resources on O'Grady, you'll find a link to the Art Institute's online collection record for a miscegenated family album, which tells you whether or not the work's on display. You can follow me on Twitter now at Lucas Livingston. If you have any questions you'd like me to discuss in future episodes, be sure to email me at info at ancientartpodcast.org. You can also give feedback on the website and fill out a fun little survey. You can comment on each episode on the website or on YouTube. And if you like the podcast, why not share the love with some iTunes comments? It helps get the podcast noticed. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time on the Ancient Art Podcast. Podcast.